Sunday night, we are live from Auckland Park in Johannesburg. But as you know, history was made in Rabat, Morocco. We need to celebrate that. So what do you say? Let's get things going. It's topical. Starts right now. A very good evening to you, South Africa, those watching around the world. My name is Blaine Herman, and this is It's Topical. Our digital audience is back with us tonight. Very good evening to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. The energy crisis in this country was our topic of the week, but we're switching things up tonight and discussing a topic that has, well, brought some light back into our lives. Banyana Banyana, crowned champions of Africa after winning WAFCON. Uh, as the SAFA statement put it, the South African senior women's national team brushed aside the intimidating atmosphere created by the massive home support in the stands to win the match 2-1. But there are also wider issues to discuss around this as well, which leads us to our question of the week. And we're asking you, what should Banyana Banyana's WAFCON win mean for women's sport in South Africa, women's football in South Africa? Follow me while I get you some context. Let me run, cut across the studio like Hilda Magaia. Great, great performance. We're going to discuss all of that. Send us your thoughts at its topical SABC. You can also give us a call 011-714-5958. Those numbers are going to periodically pop up on your screen. You love to engage with it. It's a mega milestone, isn't it? We're also going to touch on other top stories. Now, time for your round. All right, let's get to it uh, with regards to ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa addressing delegates at the 9th ANC KwaZulu-Natal Provincial Conference a short while ago. Let's flesh it out a bit. I'm bringing uh, SABC News political editor Mzundi Limbeche. He joins us live from the port city of Durban. Mzwai, very good evening to you. So we weren't expecting the president. Well, they said he wasn't attending, that he is attending. So that's early confusion in terms of our part. But talk to us about initial reception that he got. Well, a very good evening to you, Blaine. In fact, I think the reception that he got is what everybody expected because these delegates, when they started on Friday, uh, one of the things that they made very, very known was their feelings, particularly around uh, the issue of the former president. In fact, the new chairperson of the ANC did, when he was uh, introducing the president, did say there are complaints and there are concerns that they feel the former president is being persecuted. Mm -hmm. When the president of the ANC, President Ramaphosa, took to the podium playing, so they made that known. So when they uh, sang that song, when Zenu Zuma, basically what has uh, uh, Zuma done? So clearly, that was the message which they wanted the president to hear, and the president got that message. But uh, after that, so he was able to address uh, the ANC members, and then he addressed them right into the conclusion. Big takeaways from his address, Simzoi. Well, his address, he was more, <laughs> someone was saying, uh, perhaps the president at some point thought uh, he was in a more of a government setting because mm. he basically was talking about issues really that were more related to government. But perhaps you'd understand because he's the, the head of state and he's speaking to an audience that is supposed to be the implementers of those policies, the, the policies that will change the quality of lives of, our, of, of South Africa's people. Remember, the ANC currently is the governing party, so as these people get elected here, they need to go out there and be able to deal with programs that the government has put into place. So what he basically did, he updated this Congress uh, about a number of initiatives that the government is doing. In fact, one of the things that uh, he spoke about quite um, uh, a bit extensively is the issue that we are waiting uh, for him to address, the yeah. issue of the measures to boost the energy. He said uh, he's finishing his consultations, so he's been consulting with a number of stakeholders, and then at the right time, he will then make those uh, measures uh, announce those measures 
basically the measures that will somehow mitigate yeah. the load shedding that we've been witnessing in the past few months playing. I'm Zondele Mbeche, live for us in the port city of Durban. Thank you very much indeed, sir. We'll come back to you a little later on. Let's uh, flesh this out a bit further, get some analysis. Dr. Fikile Vilikazi is political analyst, joins us via Zoom. Doctor, good to have you on the program. Welcome. Evening uh, to you and good evening uh, to the viewers at home. Thank you so much for inviting me. Now, good to have you better mind to help us understand what's transpiring in KwaZulu-Natal. The reception that the ANC president uh, received in KZN, the new chair in KZN, Sponiso Duma, uh, trying to get everybody settled down as quick as possible. You heard full-throated songs. There is some saying he wasn't booed, some saying he was. What sort of signal does this send? My sense is that I think uh, there was such an overwhelming um, anticipation of this kind of hostility, but I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I think really there was just a song around Wenzeni Uzuma, which didn't last for, for, for you know, just, just for maybe a minute or so. And, and then the chair came in there very, very nicely, um, calming the crowd and say, you know, this is the president of the ANC. Yeah. Uh, it's our president. Of course, he kept on saying that there are problems in the province that do need to be addressed. But this platform is not for that. Uh, we do have a problem with the way the judiciary is, is running the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, signaling, of course, the fact that there are certain conversations that need to be held but either than that i think the president really got very good reception um you know the messages that he needed to to hear were subtly put across right. in that manner very well contained by by the chair the fact that he actually went to kwazulu natal to close this conference is that telling totally totally i mean <laughs> i was actually thinking that uh, um i think that it took a lot out of him to be able to make that decision to land uh, in guazulu natal and the fact that he didn't stay right i mean the president literally went in he delivered uh, the speech and then he went out and that should tell you i mean you could see in his posture some mm. level of, of discomfort as he entered the space the way he was sitting folding his, his, his arms really looking for people in the room to sort of make him feel well and comfortable greeting certain people here and there yeah. uh, you know there were those uh, there, there was that there was that body language um so comparatively you know to what we've seen in the eastern cape for example you know when he was doing his closing there he was very much at home there he was really comfortable in sitting so there was that if one reads into it um you know and I, I think the one thing that i thought was interesting in his conversation when he responded he made sure that he actually speaks to the question of the social impact yeah. you would remember um, that uh, former president uh, Tabombeki challenged him a couple of days ago at uh, Jesse Duarte's uh, memorial by saying that he had promised the country a social compact within 100 days and nothing has happened. And he actually said, I would like to make a point of correction around that. There is a social compact and that social compact is surrounded by an economic recovery plan yeah. and he touched on years of ESCOM and energy recovery as well and other things that he mentioned around poverty reduction, uh, you know, the, the presidential uh, a, a job creation stimulus so he did try to respond directly even even though he did not mention the names but i think it became glaring and clear to me that this is his response to what was allegedly made by U, former president Utabombe. Yeah. so i found that very particularly interesting the details of that social compact and how it lands uh, in the laps of general or south africans in general is one to watch we shall see Three of the most loaded words in politics, as you know, Doc. Thank you very much indeed you. for your time, Dr. Fikile Vilikaz, political analyst there. Appreciate your time and analysis. Be well. All right, back to uh, our top story today. Banyana Banyana's win over Morocco in the final of the Women's African Cup of Nations has reignited this passion for soccer lovers. Tonight's Word on the Street, we bring you the voices of citizens in Johannesburg about Banyana's WAFCON win. Take a look. What should Banyana Banyana's uh, AFCON win mean for women's soccer in South Africa? Well, it doesn't mean anything if they win or lose. In general, I believe that South, uh, South African soccer doesn't get the recognition that they do, should get, and they don't get what they deserve. Um, the win means a lot for the country and for the women, but for women's soccer it means nothing. Oh
one board from there now. So for Cedric, it's peeled off. Of I think that that is just an absolute great win. I mean, South Africa, we should be proud for this win. I mean, the ladies have done us well. And I'm so excited. And I think this inspires other women out there. Well, basically, I think, firstly, we're proud of them. And um, it's equality. You know, we speak about men's soccer, but not a lot about women's soccer. So well done, ladies, well done. It shows that the, the football in, in South Africa, women's soccer in South Africa have uh, uh, improved indeed. And I think going forward, they, they will be able to do more better. We would like to see Banyana Banyana receiving the same remuneration as Bafana Bafana. It will encourage more women to be interested in sports. Coaches from development of referees, you know. They're just better than the guys, you know, because they just keep winning, 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 winning. So power to Imbogoto. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's the word in the street. Important to get your views. Helps us understand where we are, the state of play, and the strategy going forward. Well, no surprise then that the Banyana have been on top trending in the twitter space take a look at this so you see it's it's obvious right uh you see them trending right here banyana uh banyana throughout the day isn't it so let's also have a look at something that google did which was very interesting and llewellyn if you can show us the viewers it'll be popping up as soon as i press that take a look at this there you go little fireworks didn't hurt anyone can you see that popping up there great i think it it adds to the spirit it adds to the motivation it adds to the country feeling uh currently that we're experiencing now i want to tell you more about banyana banyana and some quick facts uh, about this team that is flying the country's flag high. Now, as you can see, the South African women's national soccer team, if you didn't know, Banyana Banyana means girls in Tatuana, uh, following South Africa's readmission to international football back in 1992, the women's football team was assembled and their first official match was on the 30th of uh, May, 1993 against Swaziland. Now, take a look at this let's talk a bit about desiree ellis some said she should change her surname from ellis to elite desiree ellis was named the head coach of the team in february 2018 uh, after helping out uh, on an interim basis following uh, dutch coach uh, vera powers resignation in 2016. you also remember that ellis was named uh, the women's coach of the year for a third successive time at the 2022 Confederation uh, African Football in Rabat, Morocco. That was just on Thursday. And Banyana Banyana won Afcon, Wafcon rather, uh, on their sixth attempt. And they have been denied in five previous women's AFCON finals, uh, 1995, 2000, 2008, 2012, and 2018. And this edition, 2022 edition, became champions for the first time in history of the national senior women's team. So once again, South Africa is at the top of African football for the first time since 1996. Banyana Banyana are the new queens of the continent. How do you feel about it? Let's take it to the better minds. Let's welcome SABC News senior journalist Tabiso Setole. Good to have you on set, my brother. Hi, but have your better mind. Also, our digital audience is here. As you can see, the gang's all here. The stars are out tonight. We're going to touch base with them, get their expertise. To you, brother Setole, first. Your initial thoughts when we when that final whistle yeah. blue after that long <laughs> nine minutes what, what we're, are not gonna, we're not going to talk about that nine minutes i mean I, I asked somebody earlier if you can do the equation the, the referee pointed four minutes yeah you saw nine minutes but anyway that's not ours to to dissect look i think the important bit out of this whole you know banyana banyana and their journey to yeah. it and it's good to see coach lulu's mm -hmm. there uh former colleagues uh bbk they will unpack this even more because these this is a person that we've worked with on a daily in as far as as women's football is concerned 93 when Desri started mm. she's traveled so long 
in as far as women's football is concerned. And this for me, I think she's the unsung hero tactically. I mean, we've been seeing throughout that the, the mind games or the mind of Desiree Ellis as a coach overall has led this team to where they are today. And yeah. you, 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 I mean, you can speak about how good the players have been, yeah. but that Desiree Ellis and how her understanding of women's football yeah. and her understanding of South African football has laid the, the platform for where these girls went. So right. I'm very proud of how De Desiree, and she's probably the nicest person, yeah. the nicest yeah. coach that That's you'll ever meet in yeah. as far as South African football is concerned. All is down to earth, yeah. besides all the achievements she's, she's had. Right. I mean, all the accolades to her. Let's bring in uh, Simpia with Ludlu. Uh, into the conversation, if you can unme uh, unmute. Uh, how much credit should we give Ms. Ellis, uh, notwithstanding that we have got a good crop of players, solid uh, crop of players, but uh, the coach deserves a good mention. Um, evening, everybody. Uh, she definitely deserves a mention, and the support that she deserves surpasses what is a lot more than what we've given her as South Africans because she's had it the hard way. She's had people discriminating her, you know, um, judging her harshly, forgetting that she deals with players that she gets in a week to produce results, mm. and forgetting that all the other coaches in South Africa are responsible to be her assistant coaches in making sure that they they, they, they coach the correct players, they, they make sure these players are ready to compete at national team, they make sure that these players are ready mentally to mm -hmm. go and compete because there's only so much she can do in a short space of time to get the results that she's getting. Yeah. So in national teams, mostly you are seen as magicians, as coaches, mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to in the club where you get to see your players day in and out. Yeah. So I want to say congratulations to Coach Days because each one of us in the under 20s, in the under 17s, we speak to her, we engage with her and we say, Coach, what type of players are you looking for in Banyana team? And mm -hmm. she says, you guys are well on your way. This is the type of players I'm looking for. And we, we work hard to make sure that she can get under 17 players that go straight to Banyana and they must be ready for that. So it's our obligation Gloria, to support her by yeah. all means. Let's bring in Gloria Brown. What was the difference this time around, Ms. Brown, uh, when you look at how close we've come over the past couple of years and now champions, what was the difference for you? Good evening. And uh, for me, the difference was that uh, they made use of the opportunity before them mm -hmm. um, and, and got over the line. And I think uh, it speaks to the planning that has taken place over the years. Um, it speaks to the pain and the heartache, heartache of every South African out there um, that has been behind this team for many years, uh, be it as a coach, be it as an administrator. Um, I think uh, it is a time when the players understood the mandate, which was, it's now or never. Yeah. Uh, Brian Mafukeng, jump in, would you, sir, uh, with regards to the consistency in this banyana banyana side from the coach to the technical staff the experience and the new blood that is coming in what difference did that make good evening everybody i think uh gloria brown who were part of the team at some stage uh coaching pure Jules, who were part of the team at some stage we have seen a lot of players graduate from uh, the under 17 all the way to the senior team but what was very important was, and if you look at the team that they brought this year versus the team that they brought last year, or that are 2018, 11 players from the team were playing in the same squad that was playing way back in 2018. But also key to that is the fact that you look at the consistent players. Mm. Your uh, Nokoma Klo, the unsung hero of the team, she's been there from 2008. Uh, your Jermaine Sopa Senior got there from 2010, Rifule Jane. So the entire squad has been together for a long time. And the fact that they've been able to bleed in new players into the squad, the foundation was set already. So it's just a matter of having them coming in. I call them the dream team, yeah. you know, because I feel that the squad that we had this year was far better than the squad we've had in any other uh, time in, in, in Manana Banyana's history. Not really discrediting anybody who's been there before, but the yeah. reality is that you have more players playing overseas, you have more players who are playing regular and also because you have a league in the country now. Right. So the coach is much, much better equipped to see their players regularly than she used to before. 
Right. Tabi, sir? Yeah, uh, in fact, I was, I wanna, I'd like to bring in BBK on that very point, uh, Brian. But uh, how important is it for local football, women's football, to get as much airtime, in particular from the public broadcaster, to bring all these youngsters that Brian and Coach Lulu, as well as Gloria, are speaking about? Because at the end of the day, it's about what the coach has at her disposal. Yes, mm -hmm. we do have international players, but it's the platform that must be laid at home. Baby K, if you can just unmute. Sorry, Tabi, so blame it on age. I think <laughs> you can see it in the gray hair here. Uh, greetings to you guys in studio and salutations to everyone on the metric wall and importantly to the viewers who are the reason why we're even having this conversation. They are very important. First, before I get to your question, Tabi, so allow me to say, Simpiwe Lulu, my coach, is talking about people who have been criticizing uh, Desri Ellis and saying all manner of nasty things. Well, I guess that those who are quick to do that are mainly residents of glass houses themselves. And it's easy for them to shout from the outside. And uh, they are not even going to take a moment to appreciate the great work that has been done by all and sundry in the team. Uh, Gloria also makes mention of where the team comes from. I think my brother Brian has also spoken about that can i just allow myself a few moments to talk about a bit of history now history tells us that when banyana banyana reformed it was a oh i ho harm kind of thing women football any any we, we we know the sport to be macho and everything else but central one individual desri ellis desri ellis i think the heartbreak and the tears that she cried mm. back in 2002 uh, in false Laura, if memory serves me correct mm. yes mm. at the false Laura stadium when banyana banyana reached the final of this popcorn and banyana banyana lost or were trailing rather to nil to nigeria that game uh, was disrupted by uh, stone throwing our mm. fans really not taking it nicely uh, having to lose and over the years nigeria has become a nemesis for uh, i mean for Tesri. over the years there have been a team that has been a thorn on banyana skin but importantly you've seen a gradual improvement with banyana banyana coming pound for pound mm. matching them stick to stick i think even before the tournament guys banyana banyana went and played in Nigeria in their backyard and beat them 2-1. That for me seemed to be a sign that that cap, that chasm was closing and Banyana Banyana were really coming to their fore. You've made mention of the fact that this was their sixth time of asking. They played five finals, they've lost all of them, but this was the moment. Right. What a better way to start. 2-1 against Nigeria mm. and the performances, let's be honest, were not that really great after that, but the way you end it, 2-1, <laughs> against the host in the sea of all those people who are in that stadium. Salute, salute, yeah. salute. Yeah. It's not how you uh, start, it's how it's you how finish, finish, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring in some fans watching this. Mkondiso uh, was watching this, no doubt, late last night. Uh, how did you feel? Are you inspired by Banyana Banyana? Um, thank you. Um, yes, I'm totally, totally inspired by Banyana Banyana. Um, I was up until midnight, even afterwards, because I was so excited and had so much adrenaline about the win. Um, the last nine minutes <laughs> were a lot to handle. Um, and I was just praying that, you know, they could win and they yeah. did and they really made us proud. And as a, a woman in South Africa, I am very proud and I'm very inspired by their work and their work ethic. Yeah. And just how yesterday they worked as a team throughout the entire match, you could see that they were focused and they wanted to win um, and they did. So yeah. we're, we're very proud of the girls and um, we can't wait for them to come home. Mosa, jump in, do you want to say something? Yes, uh, I just want to add up to what the previous speakers have spoken. So my word as well is just to congratulate Banyana Banyana and also to say I think the government needs to do more in order to mm. ensure the, the development of these women from the young age happens before we come to a point whereby we get them at an, at an older age and then you find that maybe we don't encourage those who are at a younger yeah. age to come forward and get interested in playing for these teams. Right. And for me? Um, for me, let's acknowledge the fact that uh, Banyana Banyana 
won this title unbeaten. Uh, they had a 100% track record. They put a very strong message against the Super Falcons, and we know the rivalry between the two teams. Um, they went on against Botswana. The game against Burundi, just as BBK says, it was a bit shaky, but you could see how unified the team was and how bad they wanted it. Um, they got even better in yeah. the semifinals when they played uh, Zambia, but it was even better last night. For me, it was the final stretch, and they sealed it beautifully mm. with Hilda Makaya uh, scoring a praise. And with with um our 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 defense team yeah. you know anchoring for the first time you know showing up uh Garabo Shamini Noko Macho, who is the I call her the legend because she's been around for the longest time mm -hmm. has about mm -hmm. 170 caps for Banyana Banyana mm -hmm. not forgetting Uchus Bambanani Mbane as well as uh Lebukhan Ramalepe right uh, tell me so with regards to empowering women's sport is it a case at this stage of investing uh to get the results or after the results uh rather than empowering women's sport to get those results that's a tricky one isn't it blaine because i do not think that any of our female sports uh, persons whether it's football or, or any sporting code want to feel well pity mm. or want to feel as if they are pitied they just want a fair shake however and wherever they are yeah it's about leaving out this whole thing about it's only the men who or, or they're the ones who have the sponsors and corporate south africa i think yeah. and again us as the media do have a role to play because i don't think we do enough in mm. particular to 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 you know have our ladies out there and and give them as much platform so yes we do try and particularly here on this channel to yeah. speak to, to 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 our female sporting uh, legends or female sports persons but i think in general none of them will tell you that they want pity yeah. here you go desiree ellis did it without all the sponsors yes thank you very much to to Cecil, who's sponsored and stuck by banyana banyana for mm. all these years and in a way they probably can speak for, better for themselves. I yeah. do not want to even preempt to know what sure. they want, but I think they do not want any pity. They want to be, right. make sure that they're given uh, the, the best or uh, 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 proper yeah. hand uh, as their male counterparts. All right. We also asked our viewers to send in their WhatsApp comments as well. 078 459 is that number. You can also give us a call 0117145958. You say a whole lot of extensions. Please get dialing. But let's uh, take a listen to what you have to say on WhatsApp regarding our question. My name is Diprenzo from Tembisa. Firstly, I would like to congratulate uh, Banyana Banyana for winning AFCON yesterday. Uh, their win simple tells us that uh, the women's soccer in South Africa has gone to another level. Uh, that simple send a message to the people like Ivan Koza, Kizam Downey to start the uh, ladies team so that they can boost our soccer league uh, ladies. Banyana Banyana winning the WAFCON isn't big only for women in South Africa and doesn't only encourage South African women playing soccer but it also encourages um, the men that play soccer and it shows that it is possible and it shows that um, the sport can be revived and it shows that there is a future for South African soccer players and South African soccer. Um, it's a big encouragement for everyone who plays soccer and it's a big encouragement for everyone who is interested in the future of soccer in south africa my name is tolane um the wefkan win uh for banyana banyana means a lot of things it symbolizes a lot of things especially for young girls in our country you know um they've seen last night that it's possible to chase a dream as an athlete you know because that's the thing we need to look at them as athletes and not women because they are athletes you know so for every young girl that wants to you know be a professional footballer you've seen it last night that it's possible so please go ahead and chase your dream because it's possible man uh, the possibilities are limitless so the question is simple what should this win mean for women's soccer simple question it's a complicated answer this is the numbers to dial at it's topical also on twitter we're also on facebook please engage with us digital audiences here tabi sosetole in the house quick break more next
right, welcome back. You are watching It's Topical, the program that puts you, our viewers, at the center of the discussion. Please have your say regarding the burning issue of this week. Interact with us on all our social media platforms that you see it on your screen. We are celebrating Banyana Banyana's glorious win last night in Rabat, Morocco. We have a digital audience here. The better mind, Tabiso Sotole, is also with us. We're going to discuss this. Uh, Brian Mofogeng, I know your hand was up, but I'll get to you in a bit. Um, let me tell you more about this crucial piece of football history that was made. It was a moment of great jubilation, uh, the wildest celebrations as well. Take a look at this insert compiled by co-producer Mark Eketlmotlab. A story that began long before some of them were born. in their heads, unmistakable echoes of the losses from the past five WAFCON finals. But this is a generation with its own script in mind. So it is indeed a big one. The to rewrite history and after running into dead ends, they are built up leg bite in the first half. And at times, dicing with disaster at the other end. Banyana needed a half-time reshuffle. She's cool, calm, collected as always. 18 minutes into the second half, Morocco blinked first and Hilda Damahaya tightened the screws. Though the lasers and the firecrackers milk occupied Banyana's faces, Mahaya had other ideas yet again. Around the hosts, frustration. Around the offense, deafening silence, and a collective loss of the plot. But minutes later, Morocco were interested. But here comes Morocco. Ball pity now towards Tatnaoud. Good ball in! And for them, it felt as though the action would now assume primary importance. Home ground advantage, an equalizer and a win keeper. and the keeper has been beaten for the first time in four matches but it was just a dream as Banyana's defense switched on until the last whistle mission accomplished at a long last and for them it means everything i've tried many times as a player to win this medal um, I got a silver. I got a silver in 2018, but this one is so sweet. This one is so sweet because we waited four years. It's for everyone that's been part of the national team before us, um, with us, and for the young girl that's still coming. We've got it. Now it's just by we need to be consistent, you know, in, in becoming champions in everything that we do. Have to go to the World Cup and perform to the best of our ability. And South Africans adore every bit of them. I was comfortable about the girls. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when they won, I enjoyed. it was a cherry on top. The nine minutes I added though oh, was kind of scary at first, but we were still rooting for our girls. The 2022 champions is Banyana Banyana winning. They are expected to land in South Africa on Tuesday for his topical. Marigita Mutabe, SABC News. All went to Banyana Banyana. Congratulations, Coach Desri Ellis and company. I ah, wish we were there. <laughs> I know Tabi Sussitoli were pining to be in Rabat. Uh, Lebo Dube did a fantastic job as well, bringing us all the latest. Sitole, to you first. With regards to, I heard Andile Tlamini saying earlier, calling out, not calling out, but pleading to corporate South Africa, yeah. saying, what more can we do for you, for you guys to see us? That is a real issue with regards to recognition and funding as well. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, the one thing that comes up, Blaine, I think it, it's, it's been out there for the past couple of weeks or so since we've known that Manyana Banyan, well, the progression rather yeah. to the final, then became a topic of, of how much will the ladies yeah. get? Um, they should get more. It's always a question, again, of pay. And we discussed it earlier before the show that I do not like to make comparisons yeah. with the male team because the women did it their way in their own right. And I think the conversation should be about our female team. But just a couple of days ago, the Gender Commission on Banyana Banyana, the bonus structure, they actually came out and said they are, well, 
the uh, general commission has learned with disappointment about the reports that the players of South African women's senior team will each receive 55,000 rand bonus mm. for winning, well, not for winning, rather, for reaching the finals of AFCON. And we've since heard that South are saying, or oh, uh, that they will get what 9.2 million rands yeah. on top of that. So get, pushing, their, yeah. Yeah, pushing mm. their bonuses up to about 400,000 rands each. Now the question then comes in, Blaine, why, sh and, and we hate speaking about money when it comes to competition, mm. but the ladies, what else need they do, like you're saying, to get a fair shake? Yeah. I mean, they've, 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 they've performed year in and year out. They've outperformed, again, most of our national teams, not necessarily in football, but in as far as South African national teams competing abroad. Yeah. They deserve what they are getting. And the United States of America over the past years yes. have led the way in saying maybe there shouldn't be a, a, a pay gap. Yeah. If you represent the national team, everything should be equal. So I think yeah. hopefully it's something we can push in particular again as the media because yeah. it is our duty and push and ask those questions. Why shouldn't they be on the same pay structure? I mean, right. people like Abu, Abu uh, Simpio Lulu, why shouldn't they be paid a proper wage? I mean, our female sports persons, again, day in and day out, so most yeah. of them are mothers. Yeah. So when they're not playing for the national team, they're at home. I mean, we saw just now with the tour out in, in, in the UK, a yeah. South African cricketer had to come back home because there were issues at home. And that is her part-time job, yeah. playing cricket for the national team. That should be a full-time job. She yeah. shouldn't have to have a job when she returns home. Yeah. So yeah. there are a lot of things that we should and we can fix in South African sports. Right. Overall. Professionalizing uh, the sport, isn't it? Uh, you were talking about the United States. I was just looking at my notes uh, earlier on when you were speaking. There was this landmark decision. Mm. There was a settlement in the United States with regards to the national team as well as the uh, football federation yeah. there. I think it was $24 million yeah. uh, dollars that was settled there. So it was billed as a landmark case in terms of fairness. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Mofa Gang, uh, let's, let's bring in, you had your hand up earlier. You wanted to make a comment? Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, when, when BBK mentioned the, uh, uh, the incident at, at uh, Fos Loras, I was still in school just getting into the, uh, the world of uh, broadcasting. And I still remember the 2000 event in Fos Loras where Desri Ellis got a goal as well. But, you know, you're raising a very important thing. I think we've had this conversation with Paul Gloria and uh, Coach Simpio and Lozu. And Mpumi has come up with that. We've had these discussions a lot of times around that not only corporate South Africa should come to the party. Yeah. I believe that what we have seen South Africans do now when Banyana played in this WAFCON tournament, supporting them and going out in big numbers. We need to make this a regular thing. Mm. so that the numbers are there bums on seats will eventually mm. you know attract more people coming on board more corporate sponsors will come on board and then eventually the sport will, will go professional because at the moment even the hollywood's best super league is not a professional mm. league you know mm. the players mm. still go to their work and come back and therefore play football uh, at, at 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 some stage and, right. and that, that i think is what we need to change first and we have a platform as the media to drive that message you know yeah. i mean i've been covering banyana since 2010 uh, as a commentator and also as a reporter and at any given time if you have more than 10 journalists you are very lucky mm -hmm. on a day watching a banana game or even talking about banana at any given time yeah. you know the, the biggest story now was banana qualifying for the world cup how many media houses made a big hula baloo around it mm -hmm. when they qualified for the world cup you know now mm -hmm. you're talking about them being the champions of africa how many people moved everything across to make this a celebration as we did when the the Springboks won the Rugby World Cup or yeah. when Bafana won the 1996 uh, AFCON and so forth. So it comes, it's all starting in the mind. Yeah. And also, let us put our money where our mouths are. Let's not just be the mouthpieces and make a lot of noise yeah. without really showing the support that is needed the most. You know, say what you want. Uh, you were talking about bottoms on seats. Uh, Morocco was impressive, isn't it? The crowd obviously has issues with regards to those lasers and stuff mm. like that, I understand. But there's such interest in their, their, their national team. Uh, Chairman, to you and then Coach uh, Tlulu. If you can unmute, sir. All right, I think we're having a bit of an issue with the Chairman. We'll come back to you. Uh, okay. Coach Tlulu, you wanted to say, you wanted to add a comment? Um, I wanted to say that um, uh, gender equality is not only making sure that we get paid equally in the national team. Mm -hmm. No. Gender equality also speaks about if you put men in a, in a, in a hotel, do the same thing for women. Mm -hmm. If you put down five rents for men, 
do the same thing for women. We might be a bit behind. I mean, in the FA in England, women's football was banned for 50 years. So we've got 50 or 60, 70 years to try to catch up to. It's a lot of years to try to catch up to. But we've started something great and we should carry on and not do things to tick a box, to rush things. Mm. We do it properly. And I like what BBK said. He said, we shouldn't just be doing it all by the way thing just because they've won we are doing it no it must be for a bigger picture it must be for generations to come because in 2010 the under 17 uh, uh, qualified for the world cup in 2012 we qualified for the olympics in 2014 the same team was in the the USA university games in 2016 we went to the olympics in 2018 we qualified for the world cup under 17 and banyana banyana also qualified for the world cup in 2019 2022 banyana banyana has qualified mm. for the past 10 years we should not be singing the same song a different song we should be singing is how many of our banyana players right now have got lucrative endorsements personally without them chasing knocking the same way that the men's football are done is done for them and it's yeah. not just foot, women footballers but women in sport how many of them are getting paid yeah. a appearance fee how many of them in their clubs because they are getting four hundred thousand with playing for banyana banyana what's happening in the clubs yeah. the clubs that are making sure that banyana banyana is getting players that are great because they get this four hundred thousand. someone is gonna needs to go and build a home a car yeah. somebody needs to go and pay their parents debts mm. somebody's going to pay their fees that they they needed to to pay when they were studying 99 percent of those players that are there have studied have got degrees and this is an opportunity for us as south africans even women in decision-making yeah. places check themselves and see how much further can they go go more than sasol has done go more than vodacom as the league has done go more than sanlam did go more than apsa did when they invested in women's football right. it is key for us to understand that for the background to be great the higher level of right. things will be even greater so it is for mm -hmm. us as south africans to make sure that those players in the hollywood beds they get paid a salary mm -hmm. only one team has a pay slip and that's not enough because then yeah. it means they can't come to training they can't come to matches they can't be excellent if you look at sam k right now yeah. she's the leading athlete in the world the most paid she gets 700 million mm, mm. she's close to about messi how many of our players will yeah. get to that look somebody described yeah i hear you somebody somebody it, described it, it, yes. transformation as an equal access to not only resources but opportunity yeah. i hear you uh gloria brown you had your hand up and then i'll take chairman and then we go to kumana thank you very much and uh to Tavisa as well some very good points that were raised earlier on. You know, what I'd like to just add to it is that winning is always a validation. Mm. Winning is what motivates and encourages one to continue to do the good. You know, this is what connects those feelings. You know, you'd go back and remember the World Cup of 1995. Yeah. What did we feel as a nation? What did we feel when we won the AFCON in 1996 mm. with Bafana Bafana? Yeah. It is the very same feeling right now. And we need to take this feeling and make good use of it. Right. We have to give those young players the drive to believe that it is possible. You know, we speak of behind the scenes, we speak of journalists, we speak of opportunities, recognition that needs to be given to women in sports. I, as a commentator in women's football, do we look at those opportunities that are being given to us as being fair? Yeah. No. Yeah. Even yeah. up yeah. until today, those opportunities are not fair. Mm. You talk of salaries. Let's talk about doing the job and doing it to great effect. Yeah. But you're still not treated with equality. But yet the job is of great work. Yeah. So it, no matter what happens, there's, there's so many conversations around this that we need to take care of the girl child. We need to take care of women in sports. You do the it same job. It is a conversation. Yeah. 
You do the same job, you get the same pay. Simple, right? Uh, chairman, to you. Oh, oh Chairman, ah, your line. Sorry, sir. <laughs> we'll try to, try to get you sorted out. Let's go to Kumana, uh, Pearl, uh, from, I understand, from the University of Venda. And Noku Matlu, uh, I think it's from your part of town. Uh, were you inspired last night? Kumana? Go ahead. Uh, I think you, uh, if you can just unmute, let's try it one more time. Unmute. All right. I think we're having a bit of an issue. Faith, jump in here. How did you feel last night? My um, there we go. Hold on, Commander. We'll come back to you. Faith, go on. Thank you for the opportunity that I've been given to express my own opinion. Uh, the yesterday's win. Uh, uh, for Banyana Banyana, it has led to a greater opportunity for Banyana Banyana to get a lot of sponsors mm. since it has been sponsored by Sasol. And Sasol has um, showed a great support to Banyana Banyana. And it uh, has also led to a, a greater positive influence to a lot of women in South Africa to participate in different uh, sports uh, more especially uh, soccer right all right uh, thank you let's let's try uh, commander pearl again your thoughts on last night's match and what it means for you as a young south african thank you very much uh, blake uh, greetings to members of the digital platform greetings to the community and everybody that is watching from home First and foremost, I must say that uh, that was a milestone mm. because in all honesty, ever since Wafana Wafana has been found, we have never had such a, a great milestone. With that being said, I strongly believe that that was a motivation to a lot of us as young women in this country, also as people that are going through a lot in this country in, because we are living in the stomach of gender-based violence, yeah. femicide, and so much so that was was very inspirational right and i would also like to applaud everybody that uh, has participated in that a uh, spot uh, that is being belittled a lot mm. because of gender roles and gender beliefs and also to encourage everyone that is uh, intending to form part of a spot that is a uh, uh, belittled by me. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Komana. Let's go to Lesejo first, and then we'll go to Musa. No, you had your hand up. And then BBK. Lesejo. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me to the show. Um, uh, good evening, guests. Um, I'd just like to comment on being involved with uh, young females. Um, I'm currently coaching them. Um, there's so much that still can be done, mm. and we actually are the pipeline for Banyana. Um, there's things that are lacking, especially in this sport, yeah. which we could, this could actually inspire uh, everyone, even young girls, because it's so yeah. hard to find a young girl, six or seven year old, mm -hmm. who wants to play. Uh, whereas in boys, they already start playing at that age and are encouraged to do that instead of the girls. Right. So as a development coach, uh, just having that and having more girls involved in the sport and making sure that the winning never stops because yeah. yeah. we need to recycle the whole time. Uh, this shouldn't just be a once off. It yeah. should happen consistently and improve the game in yeah. this country and even in the African continent. Uh, thank you. I want to talk a, a bit more uh, about the succession plan that we have these champions now. What next? Kenny, uh, jump in with regards to your thoughts. What do you make of uh, last night's performance and what it means for South Africa? If you can unmute Kenny. Uh, it seems that we're having a bit of an issue with Kenny. Musa, to you, sir. 
Yes, uh, I just want to add more to my previous point that we um, we just need to also, uh, as South African, change our attitude more, especially mm -hmm. from the spectator point of view. We need to give our ladies more support so that at least we can encourage them even more. I was just looking at the example of the Moroccan citizens. If you look at the stadium, the stadium was almost full. Mm. And then if you can that, and then you compare to us South African, our attitude hasn't reached that level of support. So I think apart from the government and everybody that is involved in the sport, we need to also be able to encourage them as citizens. Join the, 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 their, their games and then go see them whenever they play. And then I think that as well will push something mm. as well in terms their support and their attitude as well in terms of the play that they, they, they do. All right. We, uh, Busa, thank you very much indeed. We're trying to get uh, Daniel Dan, uh, President of SAFA, uh, on the line when he's there. I understand he's with us. Sir, good to have you on the program. <sighs> I can't imagine how you're feeling uh, with regards to this jubilation that South Africans are exuding uh, today, a day later. I understand the team is coming back on Tuesday. Correct me if I'm wrong. But talk to us about what worked in terms of these years that we didn't get that cup. What was the difference this time round from a SAFA point of view? Well, I think that, um, look, it was a, a building process and uh, in any building of a team, it is exactly when the team will, will peak and when all of the factors will work together for success. Mm. Uh, this particular team, of course, they, they've been in the final in 2018. Uh, about 80% of the players. But on that occasion, of course, it was against uh, Nigeria. Uh, they had beaten Nigeria in the first round uh, of the group stages, as was in this tournament. Uh, and I think the players matured. Uh, the fact that the players played overseas, I think there are factors around the team. One, that nine of the players in the squad played their football and start playing their football overseas. Some of them uh, were, were big clubs. The captain, of course, yeah. uh, Rafael Rajani with AC Milan. Yeah. Uh, secondly, the coach. Uh, been there for a number of uh, tournaments, both AFCON and COSAFA. Right. And thirdly, uh, the fact that we have given them the opportunity to play against major opposition. Mm. Uh, number, the top five countries in the world, United States, we played, we played the Netherlands, uh, we played France, yeah. uh, they played in the Cyprus Cup. And I think over time, they, they managed to handle the stress and the pressure better. And if you saw how they were battling in the last uh, nine minutes of extra time, uh, they were determined this time not to let it slip. Uh, we lost by penalty shootout in 2018. Yeah. So I think the team really has come together and the coach, uh, of course, has been there for a number of years with these players. Dr. Yordan, uh, Tabi is speaking. Um, I'm, sh I'm, I'm not quite sure how much you got of our panel conversation earlier. The one question, the one point that comes out from our guests is that we should stop talking about the support that we mm. should afford these ladies. We know that they can deliver, they are delivering. A lot of South Africans will be at the airport Tuesday to see the ladies come home. We are running out of time as I ask you this question. We need, we'd like to know how and when will things change for us to actually put our backs into it and give the ladies what they need? I don't understand that question. We have been putting our back into it for the last five years. We have invested 300 million uh, in women's football. Everyone virtually on that field, is a graduate. They have degrees. They are playing overseas. 27 of the, the players are playing overseas. The Hollywood bets is there uh, and has produced many of the players who, from the club level in South Africa, to compete yeah. with the best in this AFCON. Oh, wow. So, uh, no, I think it is a false understanding that uh, we must still put our back in. We have been putting our back in, and that is why we have this result. I think it is time that South Africans speak to these players themselves and get their perspective. 
uh, they are very, very happy uh, right. that uh, Kofana, I mean, Banyana has been supported by SAFA, uh, has been to international exposure through the programs, uh, and uh, is now not only crowned the champions right. of Africa, but also voted the yeah. best team on the African continent. Everybody has agreed. Yeah. When they saw the team against Nigeria, yeah. this is the team that will win this AFCON. Dr. Uh, Yoda. And they delivered on the promise. There's so much to discuss. We could definitely have to have you back onto the program. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Tommy's will get him. The doctor on Tuesday definitely. when arrive. We'll, we'll get him. Thank you very much indeed for your time, digital audience. As always, a pleasure. Brother Satole, great to have you, your perspective on this. Here's my take. The beautiful game has once again produced a beautiful feeling in South Africa. After years of anguish for the South African senior women's national team, having finished what runners up five times, the final whistle this time sounded euphoria. There's fresh hope for a better, brighter future. There's a lesson in that. Never give up. No matter how bleak the situation seems, these eye-watering high fuel prices, the electricity crisis, the general rising cost of living, never give up. The head and heart need to come together for clarity of thought. Will this country come together around the promise of what it can be? Once again, sport has inspired. So let's build on that. Let's build on the best instincts that we have and renew our will and devotion to the cause, the cause of the collective. The news continues. Stand by for the globe, but let's leave you with the memorable moments from last night's WAFCON final. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye. Bravo, 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 bravissimo, let's go celebrate. Long one forward for me now, Siopo Sinwe has peeled off a marker. Siopo Sinwe still going, we're going to cut the ball back. Siopo Sinwe has bought many into the back of the net. Hilda Tulagele Machaia has found the back of the net. And now the Tulagele Ellison. After trying for six times to be the champions, are the champions of Africa. The 2022 champions is Banyana Banyana, winning by two goals to one. And there we have it, total energies. Africa Cup of Nations champions, goalkeeper of the tournament, all went to Banyana Banyana. Congratulations, Coach Desri Ellis and company.